What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tapping into another episode of the Mindful Money Makers podcast, where we talk about all the tips, tricks, and strategies, and mindset shifts that you need to make if you want to live a life by design instead of by default. Today, 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 we're talking to somebody who is a beautiful spirit, a beautiful soul, a vibrant energy, and someone that you need to get to know. Today, we're talking to my friend Diana. How are you, Miss Saturn? Hello, I'm so good. How are you? Oh, phenomenally well. So happy that we have the opportunity to chat, chop it up and, and share you with the world yet again. Thank you for Thank showing you. up. Thank you for showing up. Yes, indeed. Let's jump into it. So for the people that uh, aren't aware of who you are and what you're doing, will you give us a brief introduction into how you got started, what you're doing and, and where you're headed? Sure. I am a master hypnotist. I'm trained in NLP. I created hypno breath, which is a beautiful combination of hypnosis and breath work. Um, breath work changed my life. Um, it really, the first breath work session that I ever had, I guess I'll get there in a minute when I finish the introduction, but I'm just really excited about breath work. (laughs) And I also hold retreats, which is my number one passion. I love taking people from the environment that they're used to, from the environment that pretty much is keeping them sick and taking them to paradise and immersing their bodies for seven days in paradise where the sun, the sea, and the sand supports their physicality while I support their mental and everything else. And they show up for themselves. And the transformation that comes out of that is huge because when you support your body and your nervous system, your subconscious mind can shift like very rapidly. So I love that. And the reason that breath work is such an important part of these retreats is because of how it changed my life. The first time that I did a class, I was literally high for two days and I was like, okay, um, this is, (laughs) this is new. And I felt like I healed like 30 years of trauma, um, on that couch in 40 minutes. And I was like, I know what I have to bring to the people. (laughs) Mm. Yes, indeed. It's super powerful stuff. And I got to tell you, I've experienced you firsthand and boy, the transformation is real, you know, and I I think that is beautiful that you've committed yourself to getting people out of their comfort zone, because I think that shift in state kind of opens them up to what is available and what is possible, you know, for them where, uh, in, in contrast, being in your normal uh, environment kind of restricts you to what you have come to become familiar with, right? Yeah. Um, so that's super dope. And, and it's also super deep and it's not normalized. So how did you get from, you know, for, I, I, I assume you come from planet Earth. <laughs> you know, I could be wrong. But how do you get, <laughs> how you get from? Train to the scene. Yeah, how do, you, how do you get from what we do consider to be normal to showing up so powerfully with breath work and, and hypno breath and all of the things? Well, normal was not working for me anymore. And um, I realized that it never really did work for me. I used to make a lot of excuses for myself like, um, yeah, you have back pain, but a lot of people have back pain. Everyone complains about back pain, right? I, my gut isn't you know, where I want it to be, but everybody eats meat and dairy and cheese all the time. So I'm going to sit here and eat that block of cheese while I eat TV. Like I had the worst habits. When I tell you the worst habits, like blocks of cheese were the tip of the iceberg. Wait, I, I <laughs> thought you were, I thought you were exaggerating. Please no. don't tell me you were sitting there eating blocks of cheese. Yeah. Like, yeah. and, and yeah. the funny thing is, is that like, why isn't that normal? Like a snack? Yeah, of course I'm going to take the block of cheese and I'm just going to eat it until I don't want to eat it anymore. Not like the entire thing in one sitting, but like just eating slices off of the block mm-hmm. of cheese. Like that is like a representation of how my eating habits and my and my, I used to be, and, um, that is considered normal nowadays. And I was like, okay, the only thing, cause I was suffering from a lot of, um, chronic pain from autoimmune issues and a lot of, a lot of different things, um, growing up. And it came to a point where I was like, okay, the things that I'm doing that other people are doing for their bodies are not working for me, at least the people around me. So let's give it one last ditch effort (laughs) and go gung-ho with the diet. 
and stop fluctuating 30 pounds every year and stop um, revolving your life around sugar because sugar is a massive addiction. Just like it, it lights up more points in the brain than cocaine does. So you can literally be more physically addicted to sugar than you can to certain drugs because of the way that it makes you feel. It's a huge serotonin boost. And you become physically addicted to it as well. So changing um, my diet was probably the biggest catapult in my spirituality back then and made me realize how connected I am to everything and um, really gave me that that shift in realizing like, it's okay. Like I, I was never one to really be normal. So why did I think that other normal things would work for me? So <laughs> let's go, I'm a go big or go home type of person. So um, I was like, let's get extreme and let's just try this. And within three weeks, my life changed. And I was like, okay, we're fucking shit up. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. How how did your life change? It was different. Oh, man. Well, the chronic pain went away. Um, within three weeks, I felt like a new person. The brain fog disappeared. I my fear around everything disappeared. Um, because I didn't realize how much holding on to that pain in my body was affecting my mindset around what I could and could not do. So after the pain went away, I actually had to talk to myself a lot. Like um, I would, I was still making decisions as if I was operating from, from the pain. And so I would have to check in with myself. Like if I was invited for a weekend away, I'd be like, all right, what's going to be going on that weekend? What will I, you know, how will I feel on day two? Do I really want to stay the whole time? And then I'd have to be like, wait a second. I don't have to think like that anymore because I'm pain free. And um I was, you know, I did a couple of like bungee jump things, which I would have never done before. And just basically said, after this pain was gone, like that, I realized a lot of my fear was attached to that. What else is there to be afraid of? Like it, it's gone. What is there to be afraid of? And the funny, not so funny thing is that over the years, it's, it's creeped back as my body has gotten probably used to the diet. The pain has creeped back. It, it wasn't a forever fix. However, just getting that, um, that freedom from it for a year and getting, having those experiences, I literally anchored in my body what is and what is not safe. So I'm much more um, apt to enjoy my life and to not go with those questions and to worry and to live my life around the pain. If I have to surrender to it, sometimes that's, that's okay. And that's just what has to be done. But my mind is so, and I'm not even going to say my mind is so much stronger, which it is, but my mind just thinks differently around it now that I was able to be separated from it for a while. Mm -hmm. That's dope. And I love the differentiation between, you know, being stronger and just thinking differently. Cause I think that mindset can be applied to so many different things. We always want to be better. We always want to be more. We always want to do all of these things when the, the truth of the matter is, is these perceptions, these relationships are just alternate, you know, it, it's based on what works best for you. Right. So I'm, I'm glad that you did find something that, that worked for you and you get to continue along this journey of, of making it effective long-term. Right. And, and then being able to turn around and share it with other people. I think a lot of what we do, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis is underrated, right? You know, but I'm I'm probably biased though, but super underrated. So I wanted I wanted to kind of backpedal a little bit to kind of catch people up to speed uh, as far as the the modalities and the the techniques and the strategies that we use to get people from point A to point B. As far as like hypnosis is one of the most underrated things and powerful, powerfully effective. I think that people don't really uh, fully understand how how powerful it is. Could we speak a little bit into that? And we'll talk about hypnosis. We'll talk about hypno breath, NLP, and you know those sure. those type of things. Yeah. So um, the, the, my favorite thing about the tools that I use with people is that these tools can also be used on their own. So when we talk about hypnosis, um, it's really just a, a window into the subconscious mind. And we can reach hypnosis from, you know, drifting off to sleep in that in-between state. We can reach it from music. We can reach it from plant medicine. We can use, reach it a lot of different ways. Um, so the, the modalities to get us into hypnosis is almost like the umbrella and then all of these different modalities like breath work, plant medicine, 
um, you know, all of these different things are kind of like ways to get us into a hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. So, so our subconscious mind is more malleable. And um, did you have a specific question? I forgot. <laughs> it wasn't a specific question. <laughs> it was just, you know, uh, about, yeah, hypnosis. It, it's a fa like, how does it work? You started talking about theta brain waves that that state you know where you're drifting off to sleep and your brain is open for suggestion yes. um I, I i guess i i wanted to kind of shine a little light on how yeah. it works and how so, effective it is you know absolutely so when we are awake we're in like the gamma the gamma stages and those are going super fast and those are like problem problem solving and like um you know some people some people might be stuck in that state they're having a very overactive mind and beta kind of um just one step under that that's like busy active and doing your thing when we go into alpha and theta those are theta is um the the best spot for hypnosis alpha you can also do some work in there but alpha and theta your brain waves are slowing down um, a lot more leaving room for suggestion leaving room for open interpretation, I'll say, um, to give a broader perspective on your own life. Because when we're trapped in like beta, um, which is like day to day, um, just aware of everything going on, our subconscious mind is taking in like 2.3 billion um, pieces of information at any given time. And we delete, distort and generalize based on our internal beliefs. So we might be sitting in the same exact room and my eyes are seeing something completely different than yours because there's so much to take in and you're seeing like, wow, I really, like if you're in a really bad mood, you might be like, wow, I really fucking hate that bedspread. It's ugly as shit. And I might be like, oh my God, it's my favorite color in the world. It's so nice. And we see things completely different even though we're looking at the same thing. So when we drop down into the, the theta state right before we sleep, we our, our subconscious is much more malleable. And when we are in it, when we're living our lives in a more relaxed state in general, we're more likely to be able to just grasp what's important instead of the things that are distracting us. So when we just delete, distort and generalize and, and get those bits of information, it's based on your mindset. So we want to make sure our mindset is right. So we are choosing to look at the right things. Essentially. Yeah. And that's how it works. Why, why would you say, you know, why would you say that that's important? I would say that's important because this is all we have. It's literally all we have at the end of the day. Like you have to lay in your bed alone at the end of the night. And if your thoughts are fucking with you, nobody's going to come and save you. <laughs> so choose your thoughts really carefully and don't take that as a threat because it's totally fine to have thoughts that aren't you know, serving you sometimes we go back into loops, we go back into spirals and that's, you know, the beauty and the curse of the human brain. Um, but just be easy on yourself. Be just show up with grace and, and, um, you know, it's so everything's okay. As long as you just keep getting back up, it sounds so cliche, but, but really. Right. 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 I, I'm really excited to talk about this because on my mission to inspire and empower 1 million people to live by design instead of by default. Right. I think that, you know, five, seven years I've been in like, you know, personal development, really interested in first, obviously developing myself and now more recently starting to help other people with it is that I think that the shortcut, like the, the thing that I wish I knew firsthand, like right off the rip would be auto suggestion, hypnosis, and going straight to the subconscious mind when I learned that it's 95, actually, I learned that it's 95% of our experience is controlled by the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And the first time I heard that, that didn't really hit me. It's like, okay, that's a cool little fact, little figure. But 95% means damn near all of it. So it's like, why am I wasting my time doing all this other stuff? I got it. They, they tell you, wake up four o'clock in the morning, go work out, do all the things. They're all great things. If they work but, for you. Right. If they work for you, if they align with you and they, they work with your schedule and your life set as it is right now. But if you can do one thing that's going to make a huge impact, 
it's just retraining your brain and implanting new thoughts, right? While you're in theta stage, when your brain is open to it, yeah. it's so easy, it's so effortless to just have, if, if there's only one habit that you could have, I would say it's to listen to affirmations at night and, and plant seeds that are aligned with you know, your, your ideal vision of your life and the identity that you want to take on, what, what you think about that? Yeah, I totally agree. And, um, I, I have to say I, I 95% agree actually, because <laughs> in there, there's, there, there are instances where you might find yourself getting more angry when you meditate mm. or things being brought up. Because if, if you're just starting to regulate your nervous system and regulate your body, um, and you try to jump right to a 20 minute meditation. I remember the first time I went to, what was it? I think it was a sound, a sound bath mm -hmm. and it was like an hour long. And this was the first time I like ever tried to meditate. I remember I went to a class like 10 years ago and, um, I was getting really angry laying there and I thought I was doing it wrong. Then years later, when I started studying the nervous system, I realized some people, if, if they jump into too long of a meditation too fast or, or put too much pressure on it, really, some things can be really drummed up in that because you're not used to feeling your body. You're not used to being without thoughts. You're not used to being, to focusing on your thoughts or not on your thoughts, whatever your meditation is for that day. And it can drum up some really rough feelings and make you think that you're doing it wrong and make you not want to do it again. So I think it's important to remind people if it's, if meditation isn't working for you, um, don't never try it again. Obviously there's going to be other times when you're in different states where it will work, but maybe for that moment, a 10 minute walk is much better than a meditation. Maybe in that moment, a dance, moving your body is much better than a med meditation, or maybe it's um, a, just a different bottom up regulation exercise, like feeling your whole body from the feet up the spine to the head. Um, so if you are meditating and, you know, everyone's telling you like, this is the answer, this is the answer, this is the best thing, the easiest thing. There's also a chance, like also give yourself a break. There's a chance that in this moment, it might not be what your body's asking for. And there are other things that you can do. So don't get discouraged. Right, right. I, I love that. That's super important. It's super important to realize that there's more than one way to skin the cat. Right. And, 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 and I think that, <laughs> what'd you say? I said, ew. <laughs> Yo, no, no cats get it over here, but there's, there's more than one way to get to the destination, right? <laughs> and, and I think that all of the ways ultimately are still building upon your subconscious mind, right? Every time you go and take a walk, you're, you're telling yourself who you are, exactly. right? And especially the reason why you go for a walk. So you're when you I think that when you say that I'm going to go take a walk and you actually do it, you're saying to your mind that when I have this problem, I am interested in and I am committed to changing my state in this way. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm capable of it. Right. Subconscious mind goes, takes that. And now it's a part of your identity. Right. That's a, a small way to make a big shift in your life and your react in your reality because it always comes down to what you believe about yourself and every little thing that you do that you say that you think is giving your subconscious mind information about who you are yeah very much so we get to show up <laughs> we get to show up <laughs> what a, what about because you practice so many powerful things and i'm gonna do hypno breath last since that's your your thing. Let, let's talk about NLP. I'm certified in NLP too. And I still find it a little bit difficult sometimes to explain what it is. Can you do a better job than me explaining let's what see. NLP is? Well, I've never heard you explain it, but let's, let's see what we could do. So neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro is the brain. Linguistic is the tongue or the mouth or language. So it's really the way that you program your subconscious mind with language is the basic understanding of it. So when we, when we take the basic understanding of what I explained before of the subconscious mind, um, really being just a vacuum for all of the two, two billion bit, bits of information around you at all times, that's why our language is the most potent, um, the most potent part of like speaking to our subconscious mind, because when we're speaking it, we're creating vibrations in us where forming the words, we're hearing it. And 
we're literally programming. That's that's like spelling it. That's why they call it like spells. You know, you're casting spells every time you talk. So our language is super important. So it really starts with the way that we speak about ourselves and about our lives. So even if you're going through the shittiest, shittiest time and, you know, it very well could happen where like, you know, almost nothing is going right. And, and it's really hard to look at the silver lining. Mm -hmm. Um, just an example of like, instead of saying I am sick, you can say, you could say I am healing. And this is like such a basic, basic example, but just touching on the, the importance of language when it comes to the subconscious mind, it's, it's really, um, really connected. So it just something as simple as um, you know, someone, and this isn't spiritual bypassing. We don't want to pretend like we're feeling okay when we're not, but it's just like, how can I, how can I maybe just feel not so shitty today is sometimes the question, not how can I go from sad to happy, but how can I feel not so shitty today? Maybe I just focus on the healing instead of the, the sickness. And then when you choose, when you make that one decision, then your subconscious mind is picking seven different bits of information out of the 2 billion. Does that make sense? Because we yeah. our, our conscious mind can only handle seven bits of information at a given time. Mm -hmm. So you're going to pick different things that are going to move you in the direction that you're, that you want to go in life subconsciously. Right, right. That makes I, sense. I don't know if I did much better. Oh, no, you, you, <laughs> you snapped. <laughs> you went off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's it. Yep. And, and it's super powerful. And I, I think that I, I'm really happy and grateful that we have the opportunity to kind of expose somebody. There's somebody that's listening to this right now that's never heard of it, right? And have become just a little bit more aware, even if it takes some time for that seed to germinate and actually take, you know, presence in their in their life, that now they're they're aware that it exists, right? You get yeah. to, to learn a little bit more about it because it will change everything. You. It's so funny. You, so funny. You said that I was downstairs with my roommate yesterday and I literally said, could you imagine if we didn't go to NLP? Because besides the fact that the, that the class changed my life, um, like obviously we, me and my roommate met in NLP four years ago and little did we know three and a half years later, I would be moving to live in her house and my whole life changed from the move. So I'm like, can you, like NLP literally changed my life. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like in, in close proximity and and just like all around. Like it's it's crazy how- Let's stick in abroad. <laughs> yeah, going to that one class changed everything. And uh, it's it's just funny that you're saying that now because I literally said that yesterday. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Let, let's talk about hypno breath. Let's talk about it. So you, so you combined hypnosis with breath work. Right? Yeah. And the hypnosis is, um, it varies all different kinds of subconscious mind work. Um, things that I've gathered from NLP, things that I've worked on myself that, um, became exercises, became workshops like we did in, at the retreat, which we'll get to, oh my God. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, we do, we, so I take a psychedelic breath, which is a breath that, puts you in a psychedelic like state within minutes. And a lot of people compare it to DMT. And it's a very, um, very wild feeling in your whole body. And then when the subconscious mind is open in that I work with um, releasing pain, um, sadness, anger with you, whatever you're looking to release that time, whether it's a private session or a group. And we work on releasing that in the, in the breath space, which is very, very similar to working in a plant ceremony. And, um, you can take it anywhere, you know, you can, you can fly with your breath. So that's cool. <laughs> super dope. Super dope. Well, what, what, what results do you think you can express, uh, experience rather, from doing a breathwork session or a oh session with Diana? So results, um, I've had, so you can, this breath could cause uncontrollable laughter. It can cause uncontrollable crying. It can cause uncontrollable shaking. It can cause uncontrollable orgasms. <laughs> it can literally bring your body into a full blown state of bliss. And I say bliss, even when I say crying and shaking, because 
when you're doing that with intention to heal, it feels so good. So after the classes, people usually just stare into the abyss and they're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and I love that. Um, you can experience, so before you said that you got to experience it for the first time and it, something went off. I was like, no, you got to experience your true self for the first time in that way. So that's what like, I'm just guiding your breath. You are bringing yourself to this, to this state, this moment, this everything, and you're experiencing it, which is why I love this because yes, being guided and having certain music and a certain vibe is a thing. And you always have your breath. Like I said, you can take your breath on an airplane. You can take it anywhere you want. Like it, they're not going to stop you at TSA for getting high off of your breath. So take it with you and use it. And, um, I feel like I had a point there and I, and I lost it, but, um, but people are very surprised at the shift that they can do without medicine, with their own internal resources. That's a fact. That's a fact. Let's get into the good stuff. Good stuff. Ready? <laughs> you ready? So, uh, December, early December, we took a trip. We took a flight, right? We took a flight into our heart. Flight into our heart? I stole that from you. <laughs> you did. I'm coming for my royalty check. <laughs> But we took, <laughs> we took a flight into our heart and, and visited Tulum for, was it a week, eight days? Eight day retreat. It was six days, but it felt like a lifetime. <laughs> yes, indeed. We, we created a soul fam and had a bunch of fun. Talk, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, tell me something. What went into that, you know, creating it, you know, your intention behind it, your experience with it. Gosh, okay, Anything. so... About, this is crazy. It was only in May, March, April, so maybe April. It was less than a year ago, probably like eight, nine months ago. I was sitting on the couch with one of my friends and mentors, Cole Witty, and she was asking me, like, what do you want to do? We had a meeting because, um, you know, when you just vibe with someone and you're like, if she can do it, I can do it because you see there are a lot of similarities. So I was like, look, I, I love coaching. I love this, but I am sick of doing things on zoom. I'm sick of it all. So I, all I want to do is travel and help people. All I want to do is travel and help people. And as if I hadn't been saying for years that I wanted to do retreats, like nothing clicked in that moment. So she had to be like, well, then you're going to host a retreat. And I was like, no, 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 I can't do that yet. Like, no way. I only have X amount of followers. Like, you know, I, I'm, I, I could never get someone to sign on for a retreat, like maybe next year. And she was like, listen, She's like, listen, asshole, you're going to fucking do this retreat <laughs> and you're going to like it and you're going to like, you're going to do what I say, just do what I say. And I was like, all right, like, fuck it. My way is not working. So she, the, she gave me one piece of advice. She's like, you're just going to try this. You're going to, you're going to post on this day and you're going to, and you're going to, um, it was like the most simple advice in the fucking world. And I was just like, okay, like, like there was probably a part of me that was subconsciously like, yeah, okay, I'll, that's so easy. I'll prove to you that that won't work. Like, why do we do that? <laughs> so I did it so I could prove to her that it wouldn't work, right? And within like three days, I had so many inquiries um, for people to come to Austin and so many calls. And I filled that retreat within three days. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that was wild. So I hosted a three-day event. It was awesome. It was a woman's event. It was fantastic. And then um, I was like, all right. Um, when I when I went to Tulum um, like six months ago, I was like, I'm going to host a retreat here because it's, it's, it's relevant. Everybody loves Tulum right now because it's very up and coming. It's very cool. And um, there's lots of, lots of things to do and there's lots of ways to see it. So when I was there, I was like, yep we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this because I want to bring to people what makes me feel alive. And at that moment, that is what, that's the trip that changed my life. And funny enough, 
same mentor, uh, I think we've talked about this before, was like a, a, another time months later, I was, you know, I went to her again with, you know, I need to feel alive. And what I want to do is travel. And I hadn't traveled in a year because the pandemic. And she was like, well, then you're going to go to Mexico because that's easy right now. And you're going to go. And I'm like, I can't do that. I can't go to Mexico. Like, I'm not looking to travel. Like the pandemic is still going on. I don't even know how that works. She's like, you're going to fucking Mexico and you're going to spend uh, you're going to pick an amount of money that feels good to you. And then you're going to spend a little more and you're going to spend it all I'm like, well, shit. All right. I guess what she said to do work last time. So let me go. So went to Tulum, planned a whole retreat in my head within a week. And when I came home, I was like, this, this has to happen. So I, um, created a form and a TikTok video. And I was just like, Hey guys, we're going to Tulum. And I had like 80, 80 form responses. And I filled that retreat within like three days. And I was like, okay, it's clear that when I put my heart really, really deeply into something and I could put, I could work hard on anything, but I can't fake what my heart is in. Mm -hmm. So when I put my true heart into something, it is so strong that it calls out to exactly the right people and exactly the right people show up. And nobody right here in this room besides me and you will understand exactly how that worked. Because when I, when I say like, oh, we were a family by night one, you know, it, it sounds nice, but experiencing it, I mean, I was just floored. I was floored. I've never experienced anything like that without, um, you know, plant medicine in a big group because you feel so connected and you're like, oh, these are my best friends. And <laughs> sometimes they remain your best friends and sometimes they don't. But this with no medicine, with no help from anything, with, with just true connection and, and the right questions, we really created a family within hours. And that is my passion. That's my, to take people that I truly care about, because again, like, I love people and I can't pretend to even, I can't pretend to care about somebody if I don't. <laughs> right. And, you know, we, I care about humanity, of course, on a level. And when, but when you truly love someone for the person that they are deep down inside, you show up differently. And the fact that, that I love every single person who shows up for themselves in my circle so deeply makes my job so easy. And it makes it so much fun and it makes the transformations that much deeper because nothing is fake. Nothing has to be pretend, pretended. And it's just such a, such a freaking good feeling <laughs> to be able to open up and trust like that. Right. Uh, I want to co-sign on that. I, I think yeah. you're, you're right on the money when it comes to that. I think that, you know, when you say that we created a soul family on the first day, I think that the family already existed. And like you said, it was just the experience of it, bringing it present, bringing it to the surface. It, it felt meant to be, felt like it was meant to be. And yeah, your vibe attracts your tribe. So when you put that video out, you know, it was the exact right people because they were all at some way, form or fashion, all on that frequency, all on that that vibration to come and actually follow through and actually show up and actually uh, perform the way they did, mm -hmm. you know, with love at, at the forefront, it was magical and transformational, I think, for everybody. And, and, and it's special because everybody's transformation was their own, right? It's not just one set. We're all going to be, you know, this thing. We're all looking to make a million dollars this year and that we need to transform. No, everybody had something that they brought to the trip that they wanted to address and bring up and share as an individual, which I don't think there's a word to describe it yet. I don't think the, you know. You're gonna have to make one up. Yeah, on <laughs> the spot, you know, go. <laughs> like, sure, I brought an idea. I brought an idea of how we could heal and and where people were at, but what people brought to the table individually really curated the entire event automatically. It was, it was splendiforous. So yeah, how it flowed. It was splendiferous. <laughs> yeah, and I wanna thank you. We're gonna get into the juice. We're, everything is juice, but more juice. <laughs> so I wanna thank you um, for bringing up a conversation that we all had 
on the beach because I don't know about you, but I don't run into a lot of couples where I connect so deeply with both parties and my partner as well. Like to have another couple to ask couple questions to and to discuss like how we're navigating, you know, relationships in this, you know, new conscious uh, type of mindset and all of these new rules and breaking societal norms and all these crazy things was really nice to hear it from a person that I trust and and with a partner that I absolutely fucking love because he precious dope. <laughs> it's okay, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you. That was awesome. You're welcome. It, it came from a place of course of love. Um, but also curiosity, because this gets to be new for all of us. It, it's definitely new for me. It's new for us. Um, and that's what I love about it is that I think for so I don't know, because I wasn't alive. But I think that everybody has just been like, follow the beaten path, follow what your parents did, follow it so you can stay safe, so you can stay secure. And I feel I'm definitely biased, but I feel like us as millennials are the ones that are like, no, we have the internet, so we can do what we want to do and we, <laughs> we don't have to follow. But at the same time, that puts you in places where you don't know what's going on. So you kind of tap in and, and get the pulse and see how other people are experiencing. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we, I think that we, as us particularly, value ideas and perspectives so much, like top of the list. So we're, we're looking for that, those alternative ideas and, and perspectives. And that's where right. that conversation came from. Yeah. And a lot of things, um, like you said, we're kind of the generation who is stepping out of the box of what is normal or quote unquote right. And um, navig I, ne I, I didn't realize until I was thrown into it that navigating a situation that where there's really not a lot of um, open talk about um, because people are, are also experiencing things for the first time in this because like healing like we said healing is um, becoming trendy and I think that it's awesome um, and in that there's a lot of new things opening up where where even as 30 year olds you know we're like oh is this is this okay to step out like this is this okay to, to try things like this is this okay to experience things like this and we're kind of navigating um on our own and it's it's really beautiful to have the comfortability to do that in a relationship and also outside with your with your friends that you that you trust that are also you know navigating um the the 3d and the 5d all at once i guess <laughs> yes indeed so Anybody looking to kind of link up with Saturn retreats can expect explorative conversations such as that that really gets you to dive deep and you know, yeah, come I love that. I love, love, love being asked like the uncomfortable questions and the weird questions and the um, you know, the the crazy questions, you know, just to really get down to the the depths of who people are and what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what makes them feel, what makes them really be, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Where are we going next? Oh, so many different no, ways. Huh? <laughs> We're literally or figuratively. <laughs> I was talking about in this conversation. <laughs> I guess we could talk about literally. Where we go? What's what's the next destination on Saturn for Saturn retreats? The next destination is the Dominican Republic. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> This is the first retreat that I'm holding that I haven't been to the place beforehand. So I am really excited to um, one of my, cause I'm not, I'm not gonna um, tell somebody, somebody that I'm setting up an excellent um, type of situation for them and then not experience it myself. I have to make sure it's an excellent situation before we go down that rabbit hole. So I am, you know, a day in the a day in the life, but I guess I have to go to the Dominican Republic like a couple weeks earlier and experience all of the fun things to make sure that all of the fun things are fun enough for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we do have some really epic shit in store, like um, ATVs, which are oh, always fun. We have a mansion that we're staying in that, I mean, I've never seen a house in person like this, right in between the uh, mountains and the sea. 
and um, it's going to be it's going to be really beautiful. The the healing that goes on in I think that the space is really important because the workshops where that are the most transformable uh, or transformation. What is whoa? Did I just forget a word? Transformable, transformational. Yeah, <laughs> I I believe that it's really important to have um, all of your anchors set up for you. So visually, you know, the um, auditory or gustatory, you know, the things that you're tasting, the things that you're that you're experiencing with all of your senses be really set up for success. So this house like literally hugging us between the mountains and the sea and doing what we're doing. And um, I have a facilitator coming. So we're going to have a really, uh, really awesome time at the house. And that is really it for now. Because <laughs> I could talk on and on and on for hours about it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh and i will mention that i am the mvp of finding private secret beaches so i guarantee that we will be the only ones on the beach on whichever ones that we find yes so come everybody needs to come if you're listening to my voice right now everybody needs to, you don't tune into this by accident if you're tuned in you know your, your heart has reached out in some capacity so you might as well check it out <laughs> no coincidences what are the dates for the next trip that is April 25th through May 2nd. I added an extra day because last time we were all like, I wish we just had one more day. I wish we just had one more day to relax and just go to the beach and do nothing. So I made sure that we have that day and that that extra you know, time together. And I'm so excited about it. Solid. Me too. Me too. And I, I'm excited for our collaboration. I'd love to invite everybody in my audience and in my reach and anybody that has found value in anything that I've said, right? To come and, you know, let, let's, you know, virtual is cool, but let's meet in person in paradise of all places and get some serious work done, have some serious transformation. I think my favorite part is, you know, in, in the personal development realm, there's so much, there's an abundance of information and experiences where they're just like, here's the tools, go off and, you know, do it on your own. But these opportunities like these are unique where you get to do the work here now. Let's hold your hand. We'll do it together. I'm healing. Yeah. You're healing. You know, yeah. nobody's above one another. You know, we facilitate, but it's only because we know the capabilities that you have, right? It's not that it's not that we're done with the work. We get to do the work too. And we love that. So I want to invite everybody. Oh yeah. I want to, if it's okay, and let me know if it's not, because I'll delete it. But I want to announce uh, a collaboration between the Uncle Sunny Project and Saturn Retreats long term, where you know you come to the Uncle Sunny Project for something, you're going to be exposed to Saturn Retreats, mm. right? Because it, it's that important, it's that serious. I think that uh, the world belongs to those not afraid to get out into it, right? So this is this is really important. It's really epic. Actually, the world belongs to those who do it anyway, because I gotta tell you, sometimes I'm fucking afraid, but I just do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we get to do that. Um, there was something else. Uh, how do we get in contact with Saturn Retreats? You can DM me at return to Saturn on Instagram or Instagram Saturn Retreats. I have those both. Um, you can check out information for the retreat at return to saturn.com slash dr and that will give you your form to apply it'll give you more information it'll give you all the good stuff so uh you can also put that in the in the bio probably y'all know where it is y'all know the vibes <laughs> click the link down below uh saturn ret retreat saturn returns on ig anything else let's make sure we are Leave it no stone unturned. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Feeling real good. Me too. I remember. I can't, I can't talk about the retreat and not get freaking giddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that energy is transferring to me. I remember right before we clicked record, I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> no more. Me too, actually. No more. It's a rainy, gloomy day. But well, what were you going to say? You were going to say something. I'm up. I'm up now. I'm up. I'm excited talking about the retreat. Um, then one last question. The, the question that I have for you is what can anybody listening right now 
right? Maybe a baby step, something that you can do right here, right now to start living a life by design instead of by default. <laughs> What is that? What's your piece? I'm laughing because <laughs> when you said I'm going to ask you a question and then you laughed, <laughs> I thought you were going to ask the Saturn Retreats question. Which one is that? <laughs> the one that I already asked? Uh-uh. <laughs> Which one? Did I miss a question? You might have. D- does uh, she remember? Who? Praise is saying something. What you saying? Oh yeah, that question. So this, well, what she's talking about is this, and I'll I let you slide. You said that, yeah, I just made a video talking about we're gonna go to Tulum, and I was like, that's not what you said. (laughs) (laughs) That's not what you said. (laughs) So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to say what you actually said, but that might not be what you was talking about. Wait. You remember? No, that's not what I was talking about. Now I'm confused. (laughs) Get excited. Be confused. Oh. So the video, the video yeah. that got you said 80 people. Right. Oh no, that was the the Austin one. I'm talking about the Tulum one. Mm-hmm. And you was like, yeah, we're gonna uh we're gonna go to Tulum, but that's not what you said. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get high? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're getting high. <laughs> Is that what you was talking about? No. <laughs> okay, about? I think I think we'll circle back to your question. Okay. Unless you want me to ask it. Well, we're going to do it all. It doesn't matter. All right. Um, What's the the Saturn retreats question? So we were going around the circle and there was one question that really kind of dug deep into in in learning about oneself that sometimes we don't really get this specific um, perspective of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to ask themselves today and journal on it. How do you like to be fucked? Yeah, that one. <laughs> would that be would that be your answer to the other question too? Or would it be different? You can't answer a question with a question. <laughs> oh. All right. So everybody listening right now, I want you to take some time and meditate. <laughs> how you would like to be fucked. Because that's the only way you're gonna you're gonna get it is is by outlining it for yourself first. Honestly though, and it pertains way more than just physical. Mm-hmm. Once you start journal, journaling on that, you'll realize a lot comes up and, and a lot of it is not actually pertaining to sex. <laughs> nice. And some I of it is. To, I get to do that. I got to think about that. For sure. It's one to be thought about. I like to get fucked financially. <laughs> oh, financially. <laughs> That's how I don't like to be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you said, what would be my number one advice for living a design, living a life by design, not by default? Right. And for me right now, that would be do the thing that scares you. And it might not even, it's, it sounds so cliche, but you know, you know, like a, a lot of times, you know something, but, but then for some reason, it really clicks and sinks in at another time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what's happening a lot lately with these like cliched phrases. Like they're they're actually sinking in. Like oh, like shit, everything is gonna be okay. And and um, and like d- just doing the thing that scares you is usually as long as it feels aligned and you're not just pushing through something that doesn't feel right for you. Um, that really is the answer to so many so many things because like if we don't if we don't do that thing even if it's the wrong thing eventually it will lead you to the right thing if that makes sense because you know we don't always get it right in the right in the first try but eventually if you just keep going with things that feel aligned to you there's no way that you can't get somewhere that's not better than where you are now (laughs) Right. I think that growth is the goal. Growth yeah. And I, goal. I think we forget a lot, a lot of times how capable we are and that like, shit, if things go wrong, we can always pivot. Like if things go quote unquote wrong, we're not stuck in that space. We're capable of making a decision to get us out of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Everything is figure outable. Right. Figure outable. Is that in the dictionary? 
it's gonna be we made up two words this time this podcast episode <laughs> we made up two words <laughs> that's solid that's really solid advice and I, I think that you know there's a mentor of mine that says fear is a direction mm-hmm. and that's a reframe for me because we I, I think we usually try to avoid it we run away from it and what we don't realize is that what's behind the fear is growth behind the challenge is that stronger version of yourself, the more enlightened version of yourself that is more capable than you already are super capable, but you get to realize and experience just how capable you are when you follow your fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's solid. So, oh, another amazing podcast episode in the books yes indeed we did our first one over a year ago so this yeah. one we'll, we'll be looking back at this one in 2025 <laughs> the amazing conversations and i can't wait to see you abroad and domestically because we're going to pull up to texas yeah. thank, you so, thank you so much for hopping <laughs> on the podcast and to everybody watching as always love love be well don't forget to have the guts to follow your guts And if you're still listening right now, I want to invite you for a one-on-one session with me, a clarity call to get really clear on what it is you're creating, how we're going to create it, and close the gap between where you are and where you'd like to be. Find the link in the description. This has been Return to Saturn. Diana is here. (laughs) And Saturn Retreats. And that's how we sign off. Thank Thank you so much. Love, love. Peace. (laughs) Love, love.